also assume that um, we could go on and there was significant environmental disturbances and problems going on and assume that uh, a lot of these things are trending in the wrong direction. If you were fully in power and had full cooperation, um, you were the head of the country, or the head of the world, and you could institute any policies with complete cooperation, as specifically as you can, not being general, what are the very specific things? So in other words, if, if the real truth about health was so powerful that we could influence all, th all of the world to do what we wanted, what are the very specific policies that you would put in place to bring the highest good for humanity and the environment and everything? What are the, as specific as you can, what policies would you put in place? Dare I start? Just to say, if, if you wanted to minimize the interference that you're making by this kind of global dictator role with, with the people of the world, so that you just want to give them the best chance you can of, of trying to build a better world, then I, I'd say that spend all the money that, that you possibly can on research into finding a way to take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Um, and then if you can do that, which it is scientifically possible and technically possible, but expensive, but if you spent all your money on a Manhattan-type project to, to find a, a way of direct capture of carbon dioxide, you then solved the greenhouse effect. So you've still got a million other problems, but you've got one less, and you, we don't, you wouldn't have to worry about climate change uh, anymore. So that's what I would say a, a dictator could do. He could at least spend all the world's scientific and technical resources on developing a way of taking CO2 out of the atmosphere and then let the world do its thing after that. Well, I'll venture to embarrass myself with the uh, solutions. And one thing is that uh, I think we make a mistake in even using the word solutions as uh, uh, capriciously and profitably uh, as, as we do. Um, a lot of these conditions d don't have solutions. They, uh, they're conditions that, uh, they're dilemmas, they're quandaries, they're predicaments, but they don't necessarily have solutions. So I encourage people to use the term intelligent response rather than solutions because we're flattering ourselves to think that we're going to solve this problem. Um, I think that the trend, uh, I uh, really only have two basic things to say about this. I have a basic belief that uh, human societies are emergent phenomena and they respond to the conditions that present themselves at a certain time and place in history and uh, you know to some extent events are in the driver's seat not personalities. So. Um, we, our societies tend to adapt to the conditions as reality presents them. Uh, and we're not in control to the degree that we flatter ourselves uh, to think that we are. I do think that the major trend that we're looking at from the point of view of what can we do and what should our intelligent response be to this array of predicaments, the major trend is that we are facing a uh, epical contraction of the kind of human activity we've been used to for 200 years, namely a growing industrial society. We're going to face a contraction of that activity, a contraction of the ability to generate wealth. Uh, we're going to see a scramble for resources and a shortage of capital. There are no magic nostrums or techno uh, 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 miracles that are going to uh, serve as rescue remedies. But the major trend that we can recognize is we're going to have to downscale the activities that we do. All the activities that we do are going to have to be downscaled. We're going to have to do farming more modestly. Uh, you know, even if it means we're going to grow less food, we're going to have to do uh, 
Uh, we're going we're to be doing less industrial activity. Uh, we're going to be, there are going to be fewer Walmarts. Uh, you know, I think we misunderstand many of the trends that are present right now, and we especially misunderstand the uh, uh, proposition that we can control them all. You know, we're going to have to roll with a lot of things that are going on. And there's so many of them, and there are so many of them that are truly beyond our control. So uh, uh, that, that would be my idea. You know, if we had a recognition in our society alone, forget about saving the rest of the world. You know, it's one of my pet peeves, is that uh, Americans are so eager to be world savers, and we can't even uh, fix our own country. But uh, uh, if we could recognize in this country the, the mission that we need to be on to downscale uh, the, the kind of activities we're doing <coughs> and change them. Frankly, I think we're heading in a particular direction that I call going medieval. <coughs> I really believe that's going to be the outcome of the, the, the uh, fiasco of, of the industrial age. And, uh, you know, I think that's going to set the tone for, for the future. So uh, good luck getting there. It's going to be an interesting ride. Not to be a broken record, but I agree. We need downscaling, and probably the greatest need for downscaling is the downscaling of the human activity called baby making. Um, well, that's, it gets back to your overpopulation. Exactly, exactly, oh, okay. yeah. Um, and I'm not sure that that we need to downscale all human activity. Sex doesn't always make babies. Um, but there are, I mean, we are an acquisitive species, right? So what, hap what, what, what would happen if, instead of the number of cars and boats and square footage of our McMansions, um, we, we upscaled the number of friendships, the amount of art, music, and literature we produced, right? So, so I don't know that we have to downscale necessarily the quality of human life as we might need to reconceptualize what it is to have a good life. And maybe it's not based on the amount of crap that we consume, but it's based on the number of relationships that, that we manage to cultivate. And I guess if I'm, I'm in charge of the world, um, I think most of the things that we need to do, at least with human population as well as some of these other technologies, um, and this goes back to America saving everybody when we can't save ourselves, um, is I think we have to be both humble um, and courageous. And I, and I think that what we need oftentimes is culture-specific appropriate approaches. Um, and, and one approach everywhere is just not going to work. And to the extent that it works, it means that we've homogenized human societies um, and that's sort of a grim future as well, where everything is sort of, you know, mixed society. So I would like to see culturally specific, appropriate means for reducing human populations, as well as for cultivating non-consumptive um, sorts of, of quality of life, which, uh, which is going to be post-industrial. It's going to be post-consumptive. Um, it's going to be a radical reconceptualization of what it is to have a good life. Um. I'm going to add something because I actually have thought of this and I actually have a solution that would have an <coughs> insanely radical effect on the planet. Um, I'm not sure you could get a, anyone to do it, but I think this would actually work if someone said, we absolutely, absolutely need a solution. I have a solution that would end diabetes, it would end heart disease, it would dramatically reduce almost every disease, it would end overfi overfishing, it would end factory farms, it would end land use problems, soil, transportation, chemicals, water, forest. All we would have to do is make it mandatory that every person has to sprout seeds and that's all they could eat. And then there would be no water use, there would be no land use, there'd be no chemicals, they wouldn't fish the oceans, people would have no health issues, and you know, it would be interfering, but if everyone bought sprouting seeds and sprouted clover and onion and garlic seeds and three meals a day, you sat there and ate sprouts, this would have the greatest possible impact that I could think of on everything. And even if it's bizarre of an idea, I actually think it would work if we were really that desperate, which it sounds like maybe we are. Well, can you start the Sproutocratic Party? <laughs> <laughs>